Alright guys, before I start this video, I'm just going to say two things actually. First is, if you want to buy anything featured in this video, links will be in the video description. And I say this because if you use the Amazon affiliate links, I get a small kickback. It doesn't cost you anything more or less, but it does help the channel out. And if you want to support me without directly directly sending me money, you can do it this way. The second thing is, check out my other channels. I do have a vlog channel, a gaming channel, which I don't really use, and an RTS cinema channel where I post most of my good cinematography and other tests. And I feel like it's where I put up my best work. Now I'm swallowed Now I'm the fool while you're breaking rules Dangerous path that I follow oh, Go on, just do what you do Now, as you can probably tell from that little intro, this is going to be a video based on computers. And not just any computer, but the computer sat behind me. Now, as you can probably tell by my monitor setup, things have changed. If you haven't seen the setup before, there used to be a single ultra wide monitor here and the two flanking speakers. Whereas now, we actually have a full triple monitor setup. Now, it's not strictly a triple monitor setup because only two of them are connected to my computer. The other one is connected to my Mac Mini and my PlayStation 4. But you kind of get the idea. So after using a Mac Mini for the best part of a year now with Final Cut Pro 10 and of course Adobe Photoshop for the thumbnails, I actually kind of felt like I wanted something a little bit more. I used to use Adobe Premiere Pro on my Beast PC, which I haven't had for a whole year now. I haven't had a PC for a year. It's been difficult, especially as a PC guy. So trust me, it's been very difficult using a Mac Mini. But I definitely have enjoyed it and I would recommend a Mac Mini to anyone who wants to start out making YouTube videos or maybe anyone who just wants to do video production in general because they are very efficient and scrubbing through a 4K video timeline is so smooth. And that's what I love. It's actually more efficient than my PC over here which has a much better CPU, much better graphics card and overall is much more powerful but the thing is is that scrubbing through the timeline in 4K was actually even better on the Mac Mini despite the fact it has a dual core laptop grade i5 in it. So not only have I been making videos on my Mac Mini but I've been playing games on my PS4 up here and it's been great but I wanted to play a more a bigger plethora of games now I've had a big Steam library and I've had that library for a long time now this is the part of the video where I talk about the build it was built with me and my girlfriend uh, my girlfriend Katie uh, did help me with this video and help me build the, the system at all and it was quite good it was quite fun I only got some footage of it though didn't get a hell of a lot of footage uh, because it did get quite stressful because that that hyper 212 cooler the, the cooler would ju it was just so annoying so the part selection is actually pretty good in my opinion. Before I actually had a computer with these specs right here, or I'll write them here, and I'm converting to one with these specs here. So overall, okay-ish. The graphics card is a big improvement. The amount of RAM is the same, and unfortunately I couldn't afford to actually up it to 16 or 32 gigs at the time of recording. But that's great because, you know, I can just upgrade it in the future as a PC. Uh, my CPU is much faster, but it's got fewer cores and, of course, that when it comes down to video editing and stuff, it can be a little problematic. But I actually found that even with a faster clock speed, it kind of works a little bit better, if you know what I mean. Like, just because it has fewer cores doesn't mean it's any in any way worse. And, of course, I, I am using the consumer platform instead of the prosumer platform or an enthusiast-grade platform, which would be X99. I am actually using Z270, and, of course, I, I did take a big leap, go well, downwards almost, by going from a, an enthusiast-grade setup to a more prosumer to consumer-grade setup. Now, I have edited some footage using it on Adobe Premiere Pro, and I really, really enjoy it. I feel like it's a fantastic suite of software, the Creative Cloud, but also I believe that it's just so much more powerful than Final Cut Pro is because of the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. Everything was so, do it our way or don't do it at all. Whereas the Adobe software is like, do it how you want. We're not going to help you. It's all down to you. And that's what I love. Even, you know, when I try to export video and I only got the audio, not the video, then I had to change settings. And I love that tweakability of it. And I love the fact that you kind of have to get it right, uh, which is fantastic. And test my ability. 
So editing in Adobe Premiere Pro is what's going to happen for the rest of these videos from now until whenever I decide to switch back to Mac or whatever. So I don't know when that's going to be. But yeah, I'll definitely do all of my video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro and I really have enjoyed making uh, that short uh, intro clip in Premiere Pro which I have done previously before recording this. Now, how does it play games? Well, I had a pretty good setup in my last rig. Remember, I had the 780 Ti's in SLI. Of course, when I had them in non-SLI, it was a little bit better because actually SLI can degrade performance. Even though it sounds silly, you have two GPUs now. You should have double the power, but you don't. It's not very scalable and it's not very efficient. But yeah, going from a 780 Ti all the way up to a 1080 is definitely a big step. I could have gone with the 1080 Ti, but it cost an extra £200 and I was not ready to spend that much on the GPU. So, you know, I still paid quite a lot for my GPU. It was a little bit cheaper than it should have been, but still quite a lot of money. And it plays games incredibly. You know, I've gone from from GTA to CSGO to, you know, Project Cars to all of these things, maxing them out, and they just work. It's incredible. The only games that I have problems with uh, are the Ubisoft games, weirdly enough. I cannot seem to play Watch Dogs 2 at a playable frame rate on max settings, yet I can in GTA. And arguably GTA looks better than Watch Dogs. And other things, I play Battlefield 1 at max graphics and that thing just looks incredible. It just looks amazing. And uh, all the games, I am using the ultra wide monitor there. So I am going 2560 by 1080 and uh, I don't tend to play games in 1080p. I tend to play them in ultra wide 1080p. So I do stress the GPU a little bit more and I know I'm going to get a lot of slack from people saying you bought a GTX 1080 to play games at 1080p, are you stupid? Now of course, I do realize that the 1080 is overkill for 1080p video, despite the name, uh, and I am going to try and look into going either QHD ultra wide or 4K in the future. I do really like QHD ultra wide though, so I may go with one of those, I'm not really sure. But at the moment, I am completely broke. I've spent every last penny uh, that I have buying this computer i have sold stuff that i really shouldn't have sold i've you know really put everything into this i've been saving for the for the past one year and i've now got my system and it's been definitely a big step obviously i was you know being around my age i'm 18 going to uni that kind of thing a lot of a lot of it was based on that because i'm probably going to need a pc for uni and i no i don't need that and i realize i'm not kidding myself that i need that system for university but it's definitely good to have a good stable Windows PC uh, for what I want to do. And also video editing does take a lot of processing power, like more than you think. If you haven't got a Mac uh, and you know, if you're not exclusively using Final Cut Pro 10, then it is ridiculous. It really does strain your CPU and GPU and that's why I have the system that I have. Uh, for gaming, of course, if I wanted to strictly play games, I don't need an i7. I don't need a 1080 for playing 1080p games. I could probably go with a 1060 or a 1070. And maybe an i5 uh, 7600K. I'm not quite up to date with the uh, the newest hardware. I'm kind of a, an OG guy. So there you go. But yeah, I don't really need it for gaming or university. But definitely for video editing, it does take a lot of this. And this isn't even a decent rig for video editing. You look at the editing rigs that people are using, you know, maybe the 10 core 6950X, you know, 128 gigabytes of RAM, you know, <laughs> I have eight gigabytes. They have 120 gigabytes more RAM than me. Uh, and of course they use, you know, like Tesla's, Quadro's, even the 1080 Ti, the, uh, the Titan XP, all these things, which, you know, don't even come close. Like just the Titan XP, brand new, probably cost about the same as that whole computer right there. So it does get into an incredible realm of uh, a lot of money and diminishing returns, arguably. So that's my PC. If you want to, to buy anything on Amazon that I've said in this video, so of course the 7700K, the eight gigabytes of crucial RAM, the GTX 1080 Founders Edition, uh, the motherboard, which is a Z270A Prime. I am remembering all this stuff. A SanDisk 240 gigabyte SSD, and an EVGA 600 watt power supply. If you want any of those, uh, please do check the links in the video description. I also have my mouse and keyboard, which are the G810 Orion Spectrum and the G502 Spectrum, I believe. Again, is I've taken a lot to remember. Of course, I don't have a, a case on my system right now. I just cannot afford to buy the case. I'm that broke. So, yeah, that's the problem with uh, that's the problem with spending all your money on a computer, really. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, please do check those other channels if you want as well. You know, it really does help me out. Thank you for all the support on the recent videos. I know I haven't uploaded in a week, but I have 
really struggled to figure out what content to make because I just don't have too much motivation recently or haven't had too much motivation recently. So yeah, please do check out all that stuff. Uh, like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. If you don't want to see any more computer stuff, just let me know. Um, I'll, I'll probably put up uh, the mouse and keyboard review, but I probably won't go into too much detail in the system if you guys don't want that. Um, and, you know, phones are difficult to buy. You know, I don't really want to have to buy in phones to make the reviews on. Uh, I do have an S4 in this drawer right here. That rhymed. Um, and, I, you know, it's a bit dusty, but I can definitely do some software uh, stuff on there. Again, I've said about the software stuff for a long time. It is difficult because of knocks and all those other kind of things that make me incapable of actually making the video because I'm just scared. I don't want to brick the phone, really. It's like a 50 or 60 pound phone, and maybe that doesn't sound like a lot to you guys, but right now, that's a lot of money. I could buy myself a computer case with that. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. It's been your boy, Ryan Thomas. Like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Comment telling me your thoughts, and, of course, get involved if you want to. Subscribe here. If you're new because of course that does help as well boost the numbers and as much as YouTube don't want to admit it more numbers equals more views overall and it, it sounds silly but the more subscribers you have the more subscribers you're likely to get and the more views you have the more views you're likely to get and all this random crap that I just hate the YouTube algorithm for but there we go so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one I've been Ryan Thomas with Failtech you've been a bunch of legends peace